Arise of you, O Yahweh. Let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate thee flee from before thee. Give him thanks by saying hallelujah. Welcome everyone to Into All Truth. Sorry, I've been away for a while. I'm helping a family member with a legal case, and I'm just doing things in a comfortable timing as Yah leads me and as I'm able to. Um, so my videos will continue to be a little bit sketchy. I'm only going as Yah leads me and, you know, in a, such a way that I can proceed with peace. I really appreciate your donations and your support. I am trying to work on my book as well. And so you may not always see me up here, but I am still on always will be watching. So um, I pray the Ruach HaKodesh will lead you into all truth and show you things to come and that the seed of the word will be planted in the heart, in the heart of all of the listeners and that you would be blessed in Yahusha HaMashiach. I pray that you have ears to hear and eyes to see what saith the Ruach HaKodesh in the name of Yahusha. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to talk today a little bit about... Um, a deception that is going around and being taught to the Gentiles in this time of the Gentiles being fulfilled, okay, in the time of Babylon's fall. And of course, our people can always get snared in these things, especially those Israelites who so much want to be like the Gentiles. So we're just going to go into um, what Tucker Carlson is doing lately and um, how that's going to affect the Amorite Kens and the Gentiles in America and how this might also affect us, um, Yasharel. But we know that Yah has us. We know that he has us. And so I'll praise Yah for that. Let's get into it. I always knew it was going to end badly. So family, I'm just uh, taking a look at what's going on on the conservative side of things. In particular here with Tucker Carlson who was unplugged probably about last year from Fox News. Now, of course, foxes are those who deceive, right? And it's not really clear why he was let go. But why am I talking about him? Well, I'm talking about him because, you know, we're looking at Candace Owen at this time. And I'm looking to see what he's going to do really to deceive the Gentiles. And we know recently that he went and he met with Putin when he was in Russia, and they had quite an interesting conversation. But what was mentioned by him in, on his own channel and in his own discussions was a behind-the-scenes discussion he had with somebody in Russia. I really felt like we were just speaking so far past each other that we would never like come to, I was like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And I, that, and especially when I decided or concluded that he really meant it, I was like, that's just too freaking weird to me. I was interviewing a guy one time and he started talking about the black Israelites and we're the real Jews. And I was like, you know, and it wasn't on camera, but I was like, I don't, that was so, it was so far out to me that I was like, we'll never kind of understand mm -hmm. uh, common terms on that. Mountain school. Martha Luther King Jr. Martha Luther King Jr. What'd he do? He died for a sins. No, that was, <laughs> he died for a sins. No, that was. <laughs> Another thing I want to show you is that with respect to Candace Owens and further to this idea that he could never believe that the African diaspora are the chil true children of Israel is, you know, we can look at these other very conservative 
pundits like Infowars here. And just two days ago, Tucker Carlson was live on Infowars with, um, on their channel. And the last time we saw a mention of Candace on Infowars was a month ago regarding her conversation with Don Lemon, where she was very much kind of mocking him and his homosexuality, of course, which is a sin. And they did mention her two months ago with her whole Pierce Morgan debate and whether or not Macron's wife is trans. The last time she was on Tucker Carlson was about nine months ago. And Tucker Carlson is really pushing this idea of John, Donald Trump and his surge. So this is on the landing page of the Tucker Carlson network here. Is this Trump and the surge, the art of the comeback coming soon? Now, if we look at the definition of the word surge, it means a sudden, powerful, or upward movement, especially by a crowd or a natural force, such as the waves or a tide, a sudden, large increase, typically a brief one that happens during an otherwise stable or quiescent period, to move suddenly and powerfully forward or upward. But there is a military definition of surge. A surge is a sudden large increase in something that was pre has previously been steady or has only increased or developed slowly. This is the military definition of a troop surge. And we know that all of these military-aged men have been coming in for the last two years. And also, Yah gave me that dream and the vision in 2020 about a huge polar bear, Russian bear, coming up out of the manholes. And he said that that was how it was going to be an inside job, and that was how they were going to overcome America. Babylon would fall in one hour. And so we know the dragons of Arabia are going to be part of this. And if we look closely, what is Trump standing on? It looks very much like this. It looks very much like this cube that belongs to the jet dragons of Arabia. And of course, he's wearing a 45 and a 47 on his head. We'll get back to that in the end. So how is it that Tucker Carlson does not believe the African diaspora could be Israel when he, it is very likely when he was in Russia that he saw all of these paintings, these Russian icons. He can't have missed them. And so he is, I believe, deceived and going to deceive the Gentiles, which we already know that Japheth is deceived and Bob, Babylon will fall in one hour. And they have the attitude that they have never known the loss of children. And this is going to be the reason for their fall. And so these are the foolish Galatians. But there's even more reason for this. But I want to just read through this scripture because it's kind of going to be the theme. Foolish Galatians. We know the Gentiles went into the lands of the northern kingdom very quickly after they fell and were taken into the Assyrian captivity. And so we're going to find that, that Trump is a kind of a, a different Christ, another Christ that they're preaching. as a, He's preaching as a, a sort of a God, a savior. But there's other ones that he is preaching and that the conservative right is preaching. And they're not even looking at the beginning of what Candace Owens is saying, and certainly not the Hebrew Israelite movement. So, you foolish Galatians, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. I marvel that you are so soon. Now, I'm saying this because there are a lot of conservative black people as well, and conservative black Christians 
especially a lot of the moneyed people, they will tend to follow and move towards Trump, especially because there's this whole push, artificial push towards the conservatives, because the Democrats have never done anything for the African diaspora, and now suddenly they're supposed to change, right? Well, this is more of the foolish Galatians, because Yahusha, Yahuasha is the savior, not any man. And you can't put your faith in government. And so this is directed both towards the Gentiles, we're looking at what they're doing, but also to the conservative black people who still fall for this. So, now Galatians 3, 1 through 7 says, O oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yahuasha Mashiach hath been evidently set forth. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, that ye are now made perfect by the flesh? Foolish Galatians, foolish Gaals, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Marshiah unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Marshiah. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you, that ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or Elohim? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Yahuasha. And so this includes both Yasharel and the Gentiles. And so we're going to see that it's actually worse than this. But how is it that Tucker Carlson, again, does not know? When he was in Russia, he very likely heard what Putin said or somebody told him, and he was able to see those Russian icons. And of course, we know Ondervan's dictionary says that Ham became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and the Canaanite. Okay, and so we see the word for Ham means hot-faced, to be warm, calm or calm, calm, hot, tropical, habitat, hot or warm. So these are people with dark faces. And of course, we've heard, all heard the, can the Ethiopian change his spots, which Ethiopians are associated with the Kushite. Of course, further to this and the idea of ham, being the Egyptians and those of the burnt faces, the black faces, we know in Matthew 2.13 that Yahuasha, Yahuashai, or whatever you want to call him, hid among the Egyptians. In Matthew 2.13, when they were departed, behold, an angel of Yahuwah appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him, all right? Joseph also married an Egyptian, but not only that, in Genesis 42 and 8, he was mistaken for an Egyptian, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. It wasn't just makeup. It was skin color, and he also married an Egyptian, as I said. Acts 21 and 38, Paul is accused of being an Egyptian. Are, thou, are not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar and leadest out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? And of course, in Judges 16 and 13, Delilah says to Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightst be found, bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Of course, it's only the African diaspora with kinky woolly hair who can have locks or just seven locks. 
When we talk about David, we talk about the ruddy complexion. When the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy of a fair countenance. Now, fair means beautiful. It doesn't mean light-skinned. And that's in 1 Samuel 17 and 42. And ruddy is this red horse color, sorrel or maroon. It's also the color of very famous African Americans, this ruddy red color that we see Marvin Gaye and Whitney Houston have. And we see, of course, this ruddy duck. We also see that in Revelation 1 and 15, Yahusha is described as having feet unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And this is the color of burnished brass. Okay? So these three people are rendered in burnished brass sculptures. And in Daniel 7 and 9, it describes Yahuwah himself, the Ancient of Days, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head, it says, like the pure wool, but it actually would perfectly translate as the hair of his head, pure wool. Let's look at the actual words. So we see here it says the hair, which is um, sa'ar, sa'ar, of his head, resh. So the hair is sa'ar, the head is resh, and it doesn't say like, it says wool. Amar is wool. It doesn't say like wool. It says wool. His head, wool. Pure, nikke, wool. So it actually says the hair of his head is wool, pure wool. And so we know we're made in Yahuwah's image. And so those who are made in his image have woolly hair. And we also know, of course, Song of Solomon 1 and 5 says, I am dark, yet lovely daughters of Jerusalem, dark like the tents of Kadar, like the tent curtains of Solomon. And so we look at the tents of Kadar, and they are black, made from black goat's hair. And so how Tucker Carlson could have walked through, he went to McDonald's in Russia, he certainly must have gone to see the Russian icons, and somebody could have given him the evidence for that. I really felt like we were just speaking so far past each other that we would never like come to, I was like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And I, that, and especially when I decided or concluded that he really meant it, I was like, that's just too freaking weird to me. I was interviewing a guy one time and he started talking about the black Israelites and we're the real Jews. And I was like, you know, and it wasn't on camera, but I was like, I don't, that was so, it was so far out to me that I was like, we'll never kind of understand uh, common terms on that. And so when we look at the translation of, we interpret these numbers on Trump's head, four plus five is nine, four plus seven is 11. 911 but 911 again would mean another false flag another invasion he would be the false flag he would be the false salvation and what is he so associated with what else is he associated with well this is the law that i'm talking about because this is why Tucker Carlson and the Gentiles are the foolish Galatians, because he is pushing a false salvation, and so is Tucker Carlson. Let's get into that. So we see here when um, Trump met with Shabbat rabbis in the Oval Office, and it was, it was a delegation of rabbis from Shabbat Lubavitch movement. And so this is the movement to invoke Noahide law. Okay? 
And so what is Noahide law or what is this Shabbat Lubavitch movement? It's to emphasize the, so technically since about 1978, America has been invoking, and I do mean that because that's a witchcraft word, to invoke something. They have been emphasizing annually since 1978 the role of education in society. And so the Uni United States annually marks the Education and Sharing Day in the USA, established in 1978 by the Joint Congressional Resolution. Education Day USA focuses on the foundation of meaningful education, instructing our youth in ways of morality and ethics, and teaching them an appreciation for the divine in viable values. Okay? Not law, not Torah, but values. So American Friends of Lubavitch Shabbat has been closely coordinating the annual education sharing day in the USA with the White House Congress and administration since the first such proclamation was issued by the president. See, third line down, whereas... Ethical teachings and values have formed the cornerstone of society since the dawn of civilization and found expression in the seven Noahide laws. Whereas sharing and education represent two pillars of these laws and of ethical conduct. Whereas Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson the leader of the Lubavitch movement is revered worldwide for the contributions he has made to education and sharing. And so they recognize this Rabbi Menachem and his blessed memory. And he was kind of considered really uh, almost a messiah, a kind of Mashiach, like equal with Moses. Okay. And he has been was working and it was supposed to have inspired uh, Netanyahu to agitate for war so the Messiah could come. And so this was put, has been pushed by the Clintons. It has been pushed by all of the two-winged evil bird since they established the renewal of... Um, such a designation to signal the renewal of our nation's commitment to greater acts of charity, to an enriched emphasis on education, and to the furtherance of ethical teachings and values in the affairs of government and in the lives of our citizens. Now, therefore, it be. But you see, they're referring to Noahide law. So, why am I talking about this? Because that's yeah, all you got to do. Read them. And you get into heaven. And they're pretty easy. They're great. Oh. Mr. Tucker Carlson sat down with somebody promoting these Noahide laws. Let's get into it. And they're pretty easy. They're great. When the Messiah would come, they will remain. They won't die. Wicked Jews and wicked Gentiles will be clean from the face of the earth. There's hundreds of verses and sources for it. Among the prophets and the Zohar, the Holy Zohar, the Kabbalah. That's not the topic now. But they will remain. They will see the Jews building the third temple. There will be no antisemitism. No war, no armies, no weapon. All nations would live in peace. That's it. Everyone will know there's only one real religion. The religion of God is Judaism only. Everything that came later was all fake. Now everyone knows it. The righteous Gentiles will survive and the righteous Jews. Everybody knows it. No disagreement about that. So it's not, a, it's not open for debate. Well, that's yeah, all you got to do. Read them. And you get into heaven. And they're pretty easy. They're great. Okay. The problem is that Noahide laws now are being discussed in public personalities like, like Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's a person that's watched by millions of Americans, right-wing Americans, right? 
So what we have here that the seed of oh Noahide laws are good has been planted among uh, those uh, right wing Republicans, I would say, and that is dangerous. That's very dangerous because Tucker does not go into Noahide laws what they exactly are. They're mentioning maybe three of them. There are generic laws that sound good, like you're not going to murder, you're not going to eat limb of a living animal while the animal is still alive. And when people hear this, they might say, oh, those are good laws. What's wrong with them? They're great. They're great laws, just like Tucker says. But they don't understand the sub-laws. They don't understand who is behind these laws, where these laws come from. They don't understand who has the power of interpretation of these laws and how everything is tied to these laws, even things like moment of silence in public schools, which now is a law in, in the several states. That's right. <clears throat> so it's all, the, the Noahide laws, are, they are tied to those types of things, and people just can't make connection, and that's what's happening here. That's why it's important to, to talk about it. That it would be so close in the last days that even the elect could be deceived if it were possible. Right. So we're seeing a lot of good people, uh, mm -hmm. like Tucker, uh, who has really been very uh, pro-conservative, and you know, but yet he is falling. He's got he's got a Jewish guy there. That's why he's got the hat on instead of a kippah. He's wearing a hat. He looks more like Gilligan from Gilligan's Island. Uh, and no disrespect to him, I just it kind of made me think of that when I saw that. But the point is, if you look at what Rabbi Mizrahi said just a moment ago, there will be no anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. So they're going to silence anybody and everybody. that What we're doing right now, they would consider anti-Semitic. Because yeah. why? We are going against their Talmudic law. Or their religion. I am actually for the Jews in a way that I don't mind if they go to their synagogues, keep their traditions, go ahead, do that. Everybody does that, right? I'm not going to hate them for it or discriminate against them for it. But the problem is that there is a specific group of the radical Jews, I would say, who have their hands on a government or inside a government. They, they yes. kind of have, they, they have ability to sway the views of the politicians to a certain degree, if not to very high, high degree, I would say. Well, they, they own um, them. They're bought and paid for. Exactly. So imagine if Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or Buddhists or Hindus had such power that they would be around the presidents, around the governors, and then they would uh, slowly force definition of anti-Buddhism on our government, and they would be forcing our government to pass laws. I mean, some of the laws are not even passed in our country. They're passed in Israel. We know that Governor DeSantis will yes. travel... To the state of Israel, just to pass a just law to for pass Florida. laws for Americans for Florida, like anti-Semitic laws, now, and, what, and they should be considered not legal and should be challenged well, uh, because they were done in Israel. That's not the in, United in the reality States. they're illegal, right? Yes. But you know, are they going to enforce them because these things are, have been put into our legislative systems now? So. We are not against the Jews. In fact, you know, you want to have your mitzvahs and traditions, go ahead, do that. Just like everybody has a freedom to believe what they want. Christians don't force their views on others. We can offer Christ, plant a seed, but I'm not going to force anybody to anything, mm -hmm. right? But the problem, again, is that they have such power over government and legislation that it actually goes against our own freedoms. So, and this is where the line is drawn. This is why we are talking right. about Noahide mm -hmm. laws. This is why we are mentioning wrongs of the state of Israel. Exactly, exactly. Let's play this then. 
and see exactly what happens here. That's yeah, all you gotta I've do, read and you get into heaven. And they're pretty easy. They're great. Oh. Uh, like, let's notice how Tucker Carlson says they're great. Now they're talking about Noahide laws. Laws of Noah. That's yeah, all you gotta I've do, read and you get into heaven. And they're pretty easy. They're great. They're great. They're great. They're easy. All you have to do is do that, and you go to heaven. And he says he claims he's a Christian, and he says. They're great. I read them. They're great. And he basically agrees with that. Now, isn't that against Christian faith? Well, they How actually... can you get to heaven when, when you're a Christian? What do you believe? How do you get to heaven? You have to have Christ. Yeah. The thing is, is he'll go through it. Because I've listened to the video that didn't have the commentator in here. And he goes through each and every one. And all he does is he's telling you the, the face of the law. Mm -hmm. He's not telling them Some what's laws. written in the Talmud and behind it, all the details, the decapitation. You know, this is why Jesus was crucified. He broke the law. Uh, I think it would be considered blasphemy. the one, yeah, the blasphemy. Mm -hmm. uh, because he said he's son of God. He, you know, he didn't even say it. The, the Caiaphas has said it. Right. And he said, thou sayest. And he said, you've heard his blasphemy. He rips his clothes, he said. He should be put to death. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you have violated the Noahide law, and you don't even realize that because they're not telling you that part. That's why I say it's so close it could deceive even the elect because it does look good. Well, okay, if that looks good, why not keep the Ten Commandments that don't have all their sub-laws to it and go by that and the heck with what they're trying to do now. Right. Crossover you may not have known you were waiting for, and that is controversial comedian Ari Shafir sitting down with former TV host, now extremely successful podcast host, Tucker Carlson. And Tucker keeps wanting Ari to speak about religion. Ari speaks about the fact that he went to yeshiva when he was younger, he studied the Jewish religion in any formal setting, and Tucker keeps on asking about it. So I'm going to show you this clip, it's a short clip, where they're discussing the Jewish view of what non-Jews have to do to gain a place in the world to come, and to be considered uh, good people according to the Jewish religion. All right, we're going to watch that, and then afterwards I'll come back. I am a rabbi, so I'll explain a little bit more. I'll fill in more than what Ari told Tucker, and maybe even tell you what, if I were in that seat, what I would have told Tucker that he didn't ask. Let's watch the clip. The non-Jews have seven laws of Noah. That's yeah, all you got to do, read them. and you get into heaven. And they're pretty easy. They're great. They're pretty easy. Don't eat an animal while it's still living. Exactly. Should be a no-brainer. Don't kill. Don't kill. Harder for some people, but not others. Don't rape. Even harder for some people, but most are still on the right side of it. It's not that hard. And you get to go to heaven, and you'll be right alongside a rabbi. Well, not only that, they're, they're like, very reasonable. Yeah, they're not, like, hard ones to do. No, they're, they're all kind of rooted in natural law. Yeah. No, I, I read that. And I, yeah, when you convert, they're like, what are you doing this for? You're just going to make it harder on yourself. You're going to heaven already. Well, that's interesting. Okay. okay, so Tucker likes it. He read them. He knows what they are. He says they're great. Presumably, that means he thinks society would do well if it followed these laws. But what are these laws? Ari couldn't exactly remember what they all were. Here are the laws. And by the way, out of the seven, six of them are prohibitions. Only the seventh, the last one, is a positive commandment. In Jewish law, we generally... Okay. So... Uh, this man here, if people will watch this, he's going to explain exactly what the laws are, just in case somebody has uh, still questions or never heard about Noahide laws. They're basic seven laws. They're saying uh, six of them are negative. One is a positive. The seventh positive law is that Gentiles are uh, mandated to have... Uh, courts of justice to enforce the previous six laws and also uh, what is the punishment for uh, breaking Noahide laws it's a death by sword more specifically death by decapitation yes and um, it, it is a subject that needs to be dealt with quite in depth under every single law Noahide law because the sub laws I mean, there is basic seven Noahide laws, but there is how many sub-laws, Steve, like mm. over There's 100? A, well, according to uh, Rabbi Tobia Singer, who has spoke about these, he said there's about 100 
sub-laws. Right. Uh, and this is where the question was brought up, and even Rabbi Mitzrahi was being asked the question, you know, and he said, like, he, Rabbi Mitzrahi, in one video, he goes like this, he said that there are one million uh, Buddhist idolaters. Mm -hmm. He said, and according to our law, they must die. Right. He said there are one million Christians. He said, and according to our law, they must die as idolaters. Yeah. And he goes into all these different religions. At first, he starts off with one billion idolaters on the earth that have to die. Right. So exactly. The, the plan is there. Yes. And they're, the only thing that keeps them from being able to enforce it are those uh, laws. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this would be a, maybe ideal time to play this. Watch what he says here in reference. He's talking about Noahide laws, but it's kind of an obscure one here. Uh, watch what he has to say. A bunch of Jews that speak one word of empathy to the gays, one word. I understand them. I accept it. It's not his fault. He's still religious. Who am I to judge him? All these fake expressions will be severely punished beyond what he can dream about or hear. The punishments that the people that accept such an abomination with no pain no problem whatsoever, and sometimes they send messages on social media, I love you, we are with you, we support you, call a kavod, great that you came out. They admire the Chilul Hashem he made. Okay, there yeah, you have so it. You, severe, severe, beyond what you could even imagine. Wow. So death, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Decapitation. So yeah, you, when your head's rolling around on the floor, then you'll realize that somebody now has control. Yeah. I smile because he's actually funny the way he talks. Yeah, he is. Like, he is. It is kind of comical, you it know. Is, but it but is, at the same yeah. time, you know, the thing is, is what people don't realize is what what if somebody like Rabbi Mitzrahi had control? Well, the problem to carry it here, out? the 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 problem or the truth here is that he is telling you exactly the views of. Um, the views of those radical rabbis that took over the state of Israel. Right? Yes. And uh, Smotrich and all these uh, Ben Gavir and uh, Netanyahu is now with the right wing government, but that they are of that view, what Rabbi uh, here is saying. Yes. So yes. You, when you listen to this rabbi, you know what they are about. And then the rabbis who are standing around our presidents every year re signing Noahide laws or when they're calling on Jews to pray in our Congress, mm -hmm. okay, which you have the video over there. Well, those are the rabbis from Chabad organization, and those are the ones uh, Noahide law promoting rabbis, and they are in our Congress, United States Congress, performing prayers officially. Uh, so that's where the problem is. Yes, and I'm going to take real quick... Um I was. I know it's right here somewhere, real close. At least I thought it was the Poway Rabbi when he was there uh, at the United Nations. Uh, let me just put that in real quick too. Maybe that'll bring it up there. Um, he actually, you know, what what people are failing to see is everywhere you turn. Here he is, right here, mm -hmm. uh, is the bringing out the uh, the whole thing about the Noahide laws. And uh, here he is. Here he's the he's the rabbi. You see the cast on his hand, and 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 certainly, like you said, when there are things that are anti-Semitic, we would definitely will stand up and say it's anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. Somebody going inside a synagogue and shooting and killing Jewish people is definitely anti-Semitic, oh, and it's totally wrong. Right. But do we need Noahide laws to have that dealt with? No, well, this is uh, what, before you play this, and I want to actually comment on Rabbi Goldstein here. Uh, uh, we don't need Noahide laws even as a nation. Because no, we, we uh, every everything that's in that law, like... Uh, 
we already have definitely covered within our legislative uh, system. Like there is, it's not legal to murder someone. Right, it's, it's not. been dealt with, right? right? The only thing I can think of is committing adultery. Like they want to have religious laws that if you commit adultery, you're going to be put to death by decapitation. Well, well, or, yeah, well, they're actually, that's under their whole ban of sexual laws where they would exactly. put to death homosexuals, they would put to death right. people that are. That right, are so that's not adultery. within our legislation, uh, within our judicial system because we are not a religious state it would be awful i mean uh go and watch handmaid's tale movie right. or a series just watch them and see if you would like to live in a society like this right so right. i'm sure you would not so and, and think about it when you're looking at for example uh this adultery issue because some people would argue, they would say, well, according to the Old Testament, you were to stone the, the people for committing well, adultery. Well, they are going by Jesus, New Testament. Though, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Jesus, because our country is supposed to be founded on Christian faith and Christian belief. And Jesus had that very issue brought to him, and he would not condemn the woman to death. He also said, it's not an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, even though Moses had it written in the law. Yeah, so, that's right. This is what we have to look Grace. at. Well, yeah, we can't do harm to animals like that. It's called we have animal cruelty laws. We do, and uh, you, know? you can't steal. I mean, we have theft laws. Uh, yeah, every, I mean, everything except the one about you know the immorality on the sexual thing yes. there. So, uh, and, and the reason why we don't is because mainly they're dealing with. You've got so many different opinions on this and things. It'd be very difficult to enforce it without a lot of innocent people dying in the first place. Exactly. It would be absolutely horrific to have a Jewish religious state. That, oh, that would absolutely. be the end of our liberties in every um, Th this way is what, imaginable. This is why. Listen, friends. If pay attention to what Rabbi Misrahi was saying in the first place. Rabbi Misrahi, he said... We're going, he said, a lot of Gentiles, a lot of Goim and Jews will be gone, mm -hmm. right? What does he mean by the Jews, though? In Israel, more than 50% of Israelis before this whole October the 7th fiasco, they were protesting the Ben Gavir, the Smotrich, the whole crooked government going the, the judicial reforms. They were against it. They were talking about... You know, they they were protesting in the tens of thousands in the street. The country was coming apart. Why? They didn't want a theocracy. The government is trying to bring about a theocracy because in their minds, they're helping the Orthodox community to bring about the coming of the Messiah, which he's already come. But in order to bring it about, they have to do this. This is why I'm writing the book right now. Uh, about this whole issue about the building of the third temple. It's not biblical. It's mm -hmm. biblical. It's going to happen. Yes. But the biblical aspect tells you that they totally are wrong. Yes. And uh, yeah. if you don't know as a Christian interpretation of and then Paul teaches, so does Peter, James, every one of yeah. them, that you know that we are the temple of the living so God. You can see Christians don't know the New Testament because there is so much shift and focus on the Old Testament and physical kingdom and physicality that they totally ignore teachings of the New Covenant, New Testament. Yeah. Interpretation of our faith is not supposed to be through the third temple of the Jews. We know exactly what the temple of God is, right. and it is our body, and what a privilege that uh, Most High God decided to live within you. Right. Okay, and is, this is why they're trying to Judaize so, uh, Jesus. Yes, now. they're Judaizing Christianity and interpreting it through Judaic eyes, and this is like total mess right now. But anyway, I want to go back to Rabbi Goldstein, and before you play him, he's going to explain Noah laws. Ask for Noah laws as a, you know, if if we have Noah laws, there won't be shootings like this. That's not true. There'll the, still be not, the shooting. The, the, you know, the 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 shooters are punished. We even, already even have, thou shalt not, we already have in the judicial system, exactly. you can't kill, you can't go into a church, you can't go into a center, you can't, yeah. none of these things can be done. So they're just using this to try to promote and gain public agreement right. for the Noah laws, but uh, notice how 
they're hypocrites, Steve, because that very rabbi committed crime. If you Google him, oh yes, they, he com committed crime. What is what money laundering? Or yes, there he was found guilty of money laundering. Yeah, is he in jail now? Oh, I don't even know. Okay, I doubt so, it. So. Uh, all I want to say is that those are hypocrites. He's coming with all these grandeur words in yeah. United Nations uh, for the Noahide laws and how we, we need it to be a good society. And next thing you know, he's accused of a enormous crime he committed. Yes. You know, mm. so. Here we go. The most, the most harmful, not just for the Jewish people, but for the world. Stalin killed Jews. But he killed 150 million of his own. Hitler killed Jews and killed how many millions of their own. The jihadists first killed Jews. There, and you hear a word of anti-Semitism, an innuendo, an underhand joke. That's where it begins. Use this finger and point to God and say, this is not how God intended this world to be. God intended this world not to be a jungle, not to be a wasteland, but this world is a world that we can truly turn in to be an amazing world. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this moment. We have a chance to watch civilization turn in to peace or the opposite. Do not forget this moment. Never again shall we ever have to live through such tyranny such terrorism. On the contrary, let this day that's going to be filled with love and beauty until greater times with the coming of Mashiach. How he says it should not be a jungle and it should not be a wasteland. Where is the jungle? Congo. Realize it's not just about the Jewish people, it's about the future of civilization. Do we want to Death President Trump's long love affair with capital punishment. I'm, I, I just know that he's uh, talking about this a lot. And just like this moment of silence law in public schools that people don't know, it, it looks so innocent because it's like, okay, uh, what's wrong with one minute of silence? Well, there is nothing wrong with it. That's <laughs> you right. You know, on the outside, the problem is who put that law in, whose idea it was, and it's uh, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson's idea, and officially he wants to put that law into schools because they're going to force the Noahide laws through education system. Yes. You see, so they're kind of putting their one leg into the system. So like, so it looks so innocent, right? What's wrong with it? Mm, nothing. Well, it shouldn't be a law in the first place. Okay, so here we go. Trump will talk about, well, all the terrorists deserve to die without the trial and it needs to be speedy death like quickly execute them well that's not that's not constitutional steve everybody has a right to trial exactly okay so with this type of speech and with all these chabad rabbis around him that, that that's very similar for, to the way this. the jewish uh, mindset is let's let's play a little bit of this video then and let's see what the death penalty I've always supported the death penalty. I don't even understand people that don't. We have to bring back the death penalty. They have to pay the ultimate price. By the way, on that rally, mm -hmm. he was speaking about anti-Semitism. Okay? Yes. So he's letting you know. And then he says just general term terrorists. Well, who defines who terrorist is? The latest I heard, that the fundamental Christians are considered domestic terrorists. So be very careful when you support Trump and his uh, death penalty. Yes. Uh, yeah, because you may find yourself on the wrong mm -hmm. end of the, or yeah, the wrong side of the equation right. here. All right, we'll continue. Death penalty. Bring it forth. Now they give the death penalty where they give a slight injection so that they don't have pain when the needle goes in to slowly put them to sleep. I mean, these people have to be treated very, very severely, and they're not treated severely. Very much, very much in favor of the death penalty. Let me just say, you notice what he said, they got to be treated very, very severely. Mm -hmm. Remember what Rabbi Mizrahi said? Yeah. He said they will be, they will pay the price so harshly, 
something you could never even imagine. Mm -hmm. They will be punished severely. That was the expression. So that's why if you pay attention to what Trump is saying, his speech is very similar to the way Rabbi Mitzrahi would actually say. Let's continue on. Especially for terrorists and especially for people that, you know, killers that you see so many where the girls are being killed and when they, they capture these guys. I am so for the death penalty. We will believe the right punishment, and we all do, for cop killers is called the death penalty. Penalty. Remember the old days of desert, or what happened? Bang. He deserted. You know, in the old days, when we were a strong country, it would be boom, gone. You know, spies in the old days used to be executed. Bing, and it goes quickly, right? It's called, it's called, you're dead. Treason. It's treason. You don't even hear that word. It's treason. You know, in the old days, boom, firing squad. No, it's true. I love the Second Amendment. I love the Second Amendment. Somebody said the other day, well, he had some psychological problems. Well, you know, you know, in the old days, bing, bong. When we were strong, when we were strong. The drug dealers, the drug pushers are, they're really doing damage. They're really doing damage. Some countries have a very, very tough penalty, the ultimate penalty. They don't have a big drug problem in China. They have a thing called the death penalty. In China, if you're selling drugs, it's death. It's the death penalty. I said, Mr. President, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we do not. I said, huh, big country, 1.4 billion people, right? Not much of a drug problem. I said, what do you attribute that to? Well, uh, the death penalty. <laughs> so, death penalty. We give death penalty to people that sell drugs. Death penalty. Quick trial. Death penalty. That's it. Now, I got to say something Do here on that. that. It's on. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> that. Right. The one thing that gets me, the first murder ever committed, and it was a murder in the Bible, was Cain killed Abel. And yet, the Heavenly Father would not allow him to be put to death. Right. And then when we see when Jesus comes along and they're wanting to administer the death penalty, he also would not accept the death penalty. Right. So, people, are, it's almost like it's like bloodthirst, right? Everybody wants to kill somebody, right? Think about it. That's how our Lord and Savior died. False accusation. False accusation cost him a life. He actually was put to death under Noahide laws. Keep that one in mind. And again, like I said, it'll be so close, it would deceive even the very elect. Where so you know the first people they're going to try and do these Noahide laws on will be Yasharel. But Yahuwah is coming. And so I believe in my interpretation of scripture, I believe this is when the 144 is ignited. But once again, this comes back to the difference between the law of life and grace, the spirit of the law of life versus the spirit of the law or no spirit and the law of death. So I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Messiah unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Messiah. But though we or an angel from heaven preach another gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And he repeats it, let him be accursed. This is another gospel family. The gospel is actually the good news. Gospel is really related to a spell. But this is the good news, and it's a different good news that this guy's preaching. Do I seek to please men? For yet if I please men, I should not be the servant of Yahusha. Now, Tucker Carlson is very wealthy, and he's gone fishing, and he's all relaxed, and so he doesn't have the word. He, like these foolish Galatians, has been bewitched. Bewitched, and he's bewitching the Gentiles, 
And there's a lot of conservative black people who listen to that foolishness too. And they're being bewitched also. The foolish Gauls and those Israelites who are in the mindset of the Gentiles, the Galatians, that they should be bewitched and should obey, not obey the truth before whose eyes Yahweh Moshiach hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith, even as Abraham believed Yah, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Now, if you have faith in Yahushua HaMashiach, you are a child of Abraham. It doesn't mean you're the physical seed, but this is why I say you're the spiritual seed. Because he isn't just talking to Israel, he's talking to the Gentiles also. And that's why the whole conversation is about Paul being apostle to the Gentiles. That's what Galatians is about. And Peter being apostle to to the Yehudi, and he goes into the whole thing in this book about the fact that, you know, he, he wouldn't sit with the Gentiles, and uh, one of the apostles, I think it was maybe James, and so Paul called him out. So remember that this ministration is to the Yehudi first, and then to the Gentiles. But look at this, I truly believe that this is the end of the surge the insurgency of troops that both the right and left hand of this evil, wicked bird are bringing in, and these people can't see him. They just cannot see it. But, you know, Babylon will fall in one hour, and this is all predestined. It was a golden cup in the hand of Yahuwah, but no longer. And so this is the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled. And you can go and listen to Marfugel and other channels, and they're talking about the fact that, you know, they're just straight coming across that border in military fatigues, and it's military-age men now. So that insurgency of that troop has come in, and that black cube is the black cube that those, you know, I guess Zionist Jews wear on their forehead. And so that is what they're being led into. But remember, for us, Yewasha came to dwell in us and for us to dwell in him. And this is all part of the process of him saving us. And so these guys are having you turn back towards the works of their own law. This is another Christ. This is a false Christ and a different law. And by those works, will you be saved? No, but it's by Yahweh dwelling in you and you in him. So what does the word say when we look at Matthew 5 and 17? He came not to do away with the law. Why? Because he is the law. He didn't come to do away with himself. So by dwelling in him, that's why the word says in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh, and by the word were all things created. And in John 1 and 14, it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So he didn't come to do away with himself. And then behold, in Matthew 27, 51, the veil of the temple was rent so the spirit would dwell within us. So Yahweh's sacrifice could dwell within us. And when we get to Revelation, it says, To he that overcometh, I grant to sit with me in my throne, even also as I overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. So the throne that is in heaven, which was seen on the mountaintop, is the throne that Yahuasha sits on, who is Yahuasha. Okay, he dwells in his father's throne, then we shall dwell in his throne 
as we abide in the vine. Okay, and then finally, when the kingdom of heaven comes down, the word says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahuwah is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be his people, and Yahuwah himself shall be with them and be their Elohim. So this is after the thousand-year reign of Yahuasha on the earth. Now Yahuwah himself comes. Why? Because now we become the sons of Yahuwah. And Yahuasha, the Savior, becomes fully Yahuwah again. And there will be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So the scripture says, no one can see Yah and live, except for, and it says that he dwells in this unapproachable light that Yahuasha does. Yahuasha dwells in unapproachable light. And so now we will be able to dwell in his presence, in his throne. And heaven will become part of earth, and then we get to eat from the tree of eternal life. Actually, at the beginning of the thousand-year reign, everyone does. Eternally, then everybody who's outside the kingdom who makes it through that reign gets to eat from the tree of life, who is Yahweh Shah, who is Yah. So we're all integrated back into the vine, who is Yahweh. Emily, I know you know this, that you should not allow yourself to be bewitched by a different gospel or someone, a different besora, or somebody who brings a different Moshiach. All right? So I pray that you're all blessed in Yahusha Hamashiach, and uh, may Yah bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine on you. May he be gracious with the light of his countenance and give you shalom. So family, go ahead and pick up the calendar of the cookbook at intoalltruth.net. That's intoalltruth.net. And support this ministry. I thank you for all your prayers and support. They mean so much to me. If you would please hit the like button and share. It doesn't cost you anything. I would greatly appreciate it. And Baruch to you all. Arise of you. Oh, you help. Let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate thee flee from before thee. Give him thanks by saying hallelujah.